Hello everyone, thank you for joining this presentation. My name is Stanislav Sergeyev and I am PhD student in the Acoustic Group of Signal Processing Laboratory LTS2 at EPFL in Lausanne. And I would like to show you our work on the development and implementation of Corona Discharge Actuator for active sound absorption. As usual, the presentation starts with some introduction and motivation of our work. After, I will explain you how the atmospheric corona discharge operates. Then I will tell about the basic principles of hybrid absorption technique, how we implemented it, and finally the achieved results. Uh, passive absorption methods are mostly presented by the porous materials or resonating structures. They generally perform very well, but for some particular applications, for example, in the aircraft noise reduction, the utilization might appear to be quite difficult. Uh, for porous materials, uh, the large size of the absorber is needed to absorb the low frequencies. So it's quite difficult to install them in the space-limited environment. And for resonating absorbers, uh, their problem is that they perform very good in the narrow band, but to shift the frequency of absorption or to make the absorption broadband, it is a quite difficult task. And here we can see some examples of the conventional acoustic liners uh, for the aircraft noise reduction, which, as I said, absorb quite well in some particular se selected frequencies, but the goal is to make the absorption broadband. Uh, this is why there is currently quite intensive research in the field of active sound absorption. Different techniques can provide the relatively wide range of absorption, possibility to tune it digitally without changing the parts of the absorber, and also to attenuate the low frequencies. Here is an example of the electroacoustic absorber built from the array of the loudspeakers. But talking again about the aircraft uh, applications, the compliance uh, of this unit to the harsh environment can be quite questionable because of the fragility of the membrane of the loudspeaker. And also the weight of the system can be quite large because every unit contains the copper coil and the permanent magnet. And here is our motivation to develop uh, an alternative actuator, which can substitute this in the active sound absorption techniques. In the field of flow control, the plasma-based actuators are widely used. They were shown to change the particle velocity close to the surface where the actuator is applied and also to luminarize the flow as on the right here, which leads to the broadband turbulent noise reduction. Also, the construction, the construction is rather simple and they can produce some sound when the alternating signal is applied. And here we thought that this is a good idea to try them as the actuators for active sound control. We stopped our eyes on the corona discharge type of the actuator. It basically consists of two electrodes one is rather small, high coverage emitter, and the second is much larger collector electrode. The air gap between the two electrodes is also much larger than the emitter size. When, for example, positive high voltage is applied to the emitter and the collector is grounded, the ionization starts in the small region around this emitter, since locally the magnitude of electrical field is higher than the breakdown value in the air. The electrons die out on the emitter but the positively charged ions travel to the collector in so-called drift region. In this region, the energy of the ions is not enough to provide the further ionization. And what happens? They just collide with the neutral particles of air, generating the airflow in the transferring momentum through the elastic regions. The velocity of the airflow is proportional to the voltage that we apply. And if, along with the constant voltage, we apply the Alternating voltage, the velocity of airflow will accelerate and deaccelerate, creating the compression of air, further pressure waves, and finally the sound. This is what we want. In the prototype we built, we used the nichrom wire as the meter electrode and the collector electrode built from the stainless steel perforated plate. The electrodes are separated by the dielectric frame with the distance of around 6 millimeters. The total operating area of the discharge is 5 by 5 centimeters. In order to be able to enclose the actuator from one side, uh, we designed the enclosure with the movable back wall in order to evaluate the effect of the 
different distances to the hard wall behind the actuator. The actuator operates uh, in the voltage range up to 10 kV and it can deliver a DC current up to 0.4 mA. The sound radiation from this actuator appeared to be relatively linear with harmonic distortion not exceeding 10%, which is quite satisfactory for the active control applications. When we measure the frequency response of the actuator, the curve has a prominent 20 dB per decade slope till approximately 2 or 3 kHz and, st and then stays rather flat uh, with the fluctuation of plus minus 3 dB. Uh, the similar response can be measured with the inverse polarity of the electrodes and also from the back side of the actuator. It doesn't have any resonance due to the absence of any moving mass in the actuator. But when we put the enclosure to the actuator, the low frequency radiation is very much reduced. But at frequencies higher than 1 kHz, we can have some amplification of the sound. The directivity patterns of such a source have a dipolar shape with the back radiation reduced by 5 dB comparing to the front one. So it's better to enclose the actuator from the back in order to first protect the high voltage electrode and also to have more radiation in the front. The shape of the patterns remains the same at the frequencies up to approximately 2 kHz and then the patterns become more directive and the secondary lobes appear. The non-symmetrical shape of the pattern relates to the presence of the local heat release close to the high voltage wire, which was shown in our previous work. After we know how the actuator produces the sound, let us move to the active sound absorption. We decided to implement the hybrid absorption technique because it doesn't require any analytical model of the actuator behavior. It uses the, porous, the passive porous layer and relies on the active pressure cancellation behind it. Under the pressure difference, the velocity through the porous layer is defined by its resistance. And if by any means, the pressure behind it is equal to zero, the front impedance, P1 over V, is equal to the resistance of, its la of this layer from the equation 1. If we make this resistance equal to the characteristic impedance of air, rho C, then this absorber becomes the perfect one under the normal incidence. Uh, of course, the assumption of only resistive behavior of the porous layer and the same equation for flow velocity and acoustic particle velocity are valid only at low frequencies, uh, they were shown to be true at frequencies up to several kilohertz. The whole setup is implemented in the impedance tube, where at one side there is a noise source and at the other side there is an absorber. As a porous layer, we used one centimeter of glass wool and the hard wall was set two centimeters apart from the corona sample. The microphones MR and ME correspondingly measure the reference noise from the source and the error signal from pressure cancellation. The microphones M1 and M2 are only used to measure the absorption coefficient and the impedance in front of the porous layer. The pressure cancellation is implemented with the least mean square algorithm where the reference microphone and error microphone update the adaptive filter weights in order to produce the anti-noise signal to be played back at the corona sample position. In order to improve the performance of pressure cancellation, we also included the path estimation from the actuator to the air microphone and also the feedback signal from the corona sample to the reference microphone here. Finally, here is the photo of experimental setup and the results we achieved. Here is the graph of the measurement of the impedance in the passive and in the active case. When the actuator is on, the imaginary part of the impedance fluctuates around zero comparing to some high magnitude values in the passive case. So it means that the impedance that we impose is indeed purely resistive and the resistance is also constant and fluctuates around 570 Pascal second over meter, which is quite close to the characteristic impedance of the air. All this leads to the broadband and very high absorption comparing to the passive case. But of course there are some limitations imposed by, the, by this method and the actuator itself. Uh, first, we can set only a real-valued impedance with these methods. 
And to change the impedance, we have to change the thickness of the material. Regarding the actuator, its power is enough to cancel out the sound pressure levels only up to 90 decibels here uh, with, the same, with the 5 by 5 centimeter size. And we should work on to uh, increase the output power of this actuator. So summing up, a simple plasma-based electroacoustic actuator was developed and built, which relies on the corona type discharge. We obtained a rather satisfactory acoustic performance for active sound control. Uh, broadband noise absorption was achieved using this type of the actuator and hybrid absorption technique. The actuator itself is rather lightweight and compact, with, which is very nice for some applications. But among the constraints, we have a limited output acoustic power and uh, quite weak low frequency radiation when the actuator is enclosed. Uh, so thank you for listening to me and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them.